been looking forward to this very much. Um, my potential um, uh, conflict of interest is Ondamed. You won't hear much about it here in this talk, though. Um, but I do thank Ondamed for sponsoring my presence here, and I thank the conference organizers for arranging this event. It's a lot of work, and I appreciate all they've done. Mitochondria and cellular aging is my subject. And to summarize, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we study cells. I'm going to talk about mitochondria, electrons, and ATP. And I'm going to talk about electrons as antioxidants. The human body possesses remarkable capacities for rejuvenation and repair. And optimizing these systems and maintaining them in top working order is a key to looking and feeling youthful. I'm going to summarize some dramatic breakthroughs that you may not be familiar with. I'm going to start with a personal story. I like this story because it connects me into a major discovery. Uh, the year was no, uh, 1974, November. I was a staff scientist at the Marine Biological Laboratory in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. And I got a call from a friend, Philippa Claude, called me on the phone. She said, Jim, I have to go to Stockholm. My car is parked on the street outside of my house. I can't leave it there for a couple of weeks. Would you please take care of my car? Sure, I'll take care of your car. So I went over to her house, which is the red dot, and the I can actually use my pointer, I think. Yep, the little red dot. Um, I found her car key, I started the car, and I drove down the street, and I went around the bend, and I went down a hill, and I came to the stop sign, put my foot on the brake, and it went right to the floor. This was an exciting event. I'd never experienced that before. I took a deep breath, made a quick prayer, and went through the stop sign, boom, around the corner. Nobody was coming. I lived. And I soon discovered the emergency brake, and I was able to make it the rest of the way home with the emergency brake. So that is an introduction um, to Philippa going to Stockholm to see her father receive the Nobel Prize in physiology or medicine. Uh, her father, Albert Claude, along with his colleagues, Christian de Duve and George Pilati for their discoveries concerning the structure and functional organization of the cell. This was a very exciting event for me, not only because I knew Philippa, but because I had met these gentlemen and I had followed their research. I was a cell biologist. I was uh, elated that these important, wonderful cell biologists got the Nobel Prize. And in the presentation speech uh, by Professor Edstrom of the Karolinska Institute, he said there are no earlier prize winners in this field simply because the field has been newly created, largely by these prize winners themselves. He went on to say the components of the cell are so small that it's not possible to study their inner structure, their relations, or their different roles. The cell is on a very tiny scale having a volume corresponding to a millionth of that of a pinhead. The various components, the organelles you can see in the light microscope, responsible for the functions of the cell, correspond in their turn to a millionth of this millionth and are far below the resolving powers of the light microscope. And there you see a cell with some of its components. Mainly the mitochondria are showing up there. Here is what um, Albert Claude, Christian de Duve, and Albert Pilati worked out. They worked out a procedure by which you could take a tissue such as the liver, you could homogenize it, you could centrifuge the homogenate um, at slow speed, and when you did this, a pellet would form at the bottom of the tube containing the intact cells that were remaining, nuclei, cytoskeletons, plasma membranes. And then if you took the supernatant from that test tube, many of you have probably done these procedures yourselves, uh, if you take that supernatant and spin that down at a higher speed, 
you collect another pellet with the mitochondria, lysosomes, and peroxisomes. And you can then take that supernatant and spin it down and collect finer fragments and spin that down. And ultimately, you end up with um, a pellet containing the, the smaller fragments of the cell. And the supernatant is what the biochemists have studied. The supernatant in that final um, separation procedure contains the soluble enzymes and is capable of carrying out metabolic processes. And that's widely used in biochemical research. So you can separate out the mitochondria and similar sized particles. Um, so here's the mitochondrion. And with another procedure that they developed, isopicnic or sucrose density centrifugation, you can disintegrate the mitochondrion into its parts, you can spin it in a sucrose gradient, and you can separate out the different weight components, you can fractionate the mitochondrion, and you can um, study its different parts. And doing research like this aims at really a very important aspect of this is to figure out how the mitochondria generate adenosine triphosphate, which is the source of energy for many uh, cellular processes. And it was determined that the, the mitochondrion has an electron transport chain. Uh, the components of that transport chain have been isolated, and there are Nobel Prizes for various facets of their operation. So this is a very important process. The mitochondria are the cell's power plants. They generate most of the cell's ATP that's used as a source of chemical energy. Mitochondrial changes have been implicated in the aging process. There are about 615 different proteins in the mitochondrion. There are, is an inner membrane and an outer membrane, and there are about five different compartments in the mitochondrion. So the procedures that those gentlemen received the Nobel Prize for were extremely valuable and led to great breakthroughs in our understanding, not only of mitochondria, but the other cellular components. And we know that the high energy phosphate bond, which I've shown here in uh, red, affectionately known by biochemists as squiggle P, the squiggle being the bond itself, is the immediate source of energy for things like osmotic work in the kidney, um, muscle contraction, nerve transmission, electric discharge, as in electric fish, um, electric eels, bioluminescence, cell synthesis, the synthesis of proteins, cell division. All of these are vital processes, and you need energy for them. ATP activates important processes related to injury repair and regeneration, and therefore of great interest in terms of anti-aging effects. Protein synthesis, cell division, cell migration to a site of injury or infection, and immune cell activities. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to show you some of the energy involved. I'm going to show you some uh, microscopic pictures of cells behaving energetically. And I'm going to use as an example the neutrophil, the white blood cell. Uh, the little black granules, the are uh, labeled AG, the argentifen granules contain uh, free radicals, so highly reactive molecules that can destroy bacteria and injured cells, break them down so that uh, they can clear up a site of injury. And if all goes well, I'm going to show you of a dramatic animation of this process. Here it goes. Here we're following a neutrophil as it's streaming through a capillary. We come up close on it and we see the little hairs like Velcro sticking out from its surface. Those are the integrins, the cell surface receptors. Here's a light microscope picture. There's an injury down in the lower left, uh, a, um, maybe a thorn, a splinter, 